if you look up the phrase how magnets work on Google or YouTube, you will find hundreds of people with videos and websites claiming to explain how a magnet attracts another. One official looking site is from UCLA mathematical physicist James Lincoln. In his YouTube channel, Lincoln boasts an impressive headline in one of his videos that reads, How do magnets work? Physics. Lincoln introduces the subject with an attention getter. One magnet either repels or attracts another, and nobody knows why. Except you, after watching today's video. It is clear that Lincoln intends to explain how a magnet works, that is, how a magnet physically attracts another from a distance. Lincoln begins his presentation establishing the foundations to his theory. One way to understand magnets is through magnetic domains. Unmagnetized iron metal is composed of a whole bunch of tiny little crystal magnets called domains, and they're randomly oriented, pointing in all different directions. But magnetized iron has all of the domains aligned. That is, it has a north side and a south side, and that orientation is what allows it to become a magnet. So far, Lincoln hasn't explained anything. He has merely described what a magnet is and what it's composed of. The promised theory that we've eagerly been waiting for is up next. Magnetism is the result of electron valence, that is, all magnetism is caused by electrons. It was discovered that electrons had a property called spin. The electron was spinning as it circled the nucleus. It's the alignment of the electron spins that results in the magnetic properties of iron. A magnet is a collection of microscopic crystal domains that have their electron spins aligned. This is quite disappointing and deceptive. Lincoln hasn't explained anything, certainly not the physical mechanism of how a magnet attracts another from a distance. This is not a, an explanation. This is a series of descriptions followed by a closing argument. Specifically, Lincoln fails to explain how the fact that two electrons spin in the same direction produces attraction from a distance, or how the spins of many electrons in the domains of each magnet compel the two magnets to come together. What James Lincoln has done is known as false advertising. Like Mary Poppins, he never explained anything. So we visit another popular scientific site known as How Stuff Works. There we find an article again boasting the impressive title of How Magnets Work. This is their explanation. A magnet's field comes from the movement of electrons. Electrons have a movement that physicists describe as spin in an upward or downward direction. In metals, like iron, the orbital magnetic moment encourages nearby atoms to align along the same north-south field lines. Magnets attract materials that have unpaired electrons that spin in the same direction. Marshall Brain and How Stuff Works fail to explain how electrons spinning in the same direction cause attraction. The author is so self-conscious that he hasn't explained anything that he makes the lamest of disclaimers. This explanation and its underlying quantum physics are fairly complicated, and without them the idea of magnetic attraction can be mystifying. Marshall Brain is saying that you need to take a college course in quantum mechanics to understand how a magnet attracts another. Actually, it would be quite surprising if anyone graduating with a physics degree in any university on the planet could explain how a magnet works. An interviewer once posed the question to Nobel Prize winner Richard Feynman. This is how he responded. 
If you get hold of two magnets and you push them, you can feel this pushing between them. Turn it around the other way and, it, and they slam together. Why are they doing that or how are they doing it? Uh, you ask. I, I, I must say, I think that's a perfectly reasonable question. Of course, it's ask. a reason. It's an excellent question. Okay. Uh, the, but the problem that you're asking, you see, when you ask why something happens, how does a person answer why something happens? Now, when you ask, for example, why two magnets repel. There are many different levels. It depends on whether you're a student of physics or an ordinary person who doesn't know anything or not. If you're somebody who doesn't know anything at all about it, all I can say is that there's a magnetic force that makes them repel and that you're feeling that force. I'm, I'm not answering your question, but I'm telling you how difficult a why question is. You have to know what it is that you're permitted to understand and allow to be understood and known and what it is you're not. Well, I just have to, have to tell you that's going to be one of the things you'll just have to take as an element in the world, the existence of magnetic repulsion or electrical, or electrical attraction, magnetic attraction. I can't explain that attraction in terms of anything else that's familiar to you. So I'm not going to be able to give you an answer to why magnets attract each other, except to tell you that they do. But I really can't do a good job, any job, of explaining magnetic force in terms of something else that you're more familiar with because I don't understand it in terms of anything else that you're more familiar with. If after 200 years of research and theorizing by countless theorists, Nobel Prize winner Richard Feynman, who won his medal for being a genius in quantum mechanics, could not explain how a simple magnet works, no one at any university in the world can. There is no textbook of physics on the planet that explains how one magnet attracts another from a distance. This mechanism remains a mystery in quantum mechanics. You may wonder at this point, what is it that we're after? What is it that we're trying to understand? Uh, in what way does an explanation differ from a mere description? Well, to begin with, saying that north attracts south or that positive attracts negative is just a convention. These descriptions give us no insight regarding the actual mechanism Mother Nature uses to bring two magnets together. We could just as well have said that X attracts Y. Likewise, it serves no purpose for a theorist to describe mathematically that mass attracts mass, according to Newton's law, if he cannot tell you the mechanism that brings two boxes together. If the theorist is saying that it is air that is pushing two blocks together, or that they come together because we remove the air between them, so be it. No problem. All that the theorist has to do is make the air visible so that you can visualize his theory. An explanation of a physical phenomenon is a movie. The only way to visualize the mechanism that underlies phenomena such as magnetism and gravity is by making the invisible mediators visible. We must be able to see the relevant actors in each frame of the film. For instance, can one top spinning over here compel the other top to align its spin to it if they never touch one another or have any extended object binding them in any way? If, as quantum mechanics proposes, spinning electrons compel other electrons to spin, we have to make an assumption concerning the invisible mediator. If one electron has an influence over the other, there had better be an invisible object that communicates them. Otherwise, the theorist is, in effect, introducing ghosts and spirits in that space. His explanation relies on black magic. For example, imagine that there is a donkey being dragged towards a farmer. There is nothing that we can see tugging on the donkey. It just slides in the direction of the farmer. How can a theorist of physics explain this phenomenon rationally if he doesn't introduce an object in the space between the farmer and the donkey? 
By rational, I mean that we should be able to make a movie of this phenomenon and identify each of the visible and invisible objects that participate in each frame of the movie. A viewer would understand the mechanism by simply watching the movie. If there are no invisible objects participating in this event, what mechanism does the theorist propose in the alternative? How is the donkey being dragged? By mass? By force? By energy? Should we just describe the speed at which the donkey is being dragged with an equation and call it physics? Is this what physics is about? No one who watches this scene can understand or explain the physical mechanism of attraction. This movie does not make clear how the donkey is being dragged. Compare it now against the following clip. Here we can all understand the physical mechanism of attraction without having to go to college or learning math. It's a no-brainer. The farmer is pulling on a robe tied to the donkey's neck. That's why the donkey slides towards the farmer. There are only a handful of fundamental questions that we ever needed to explain in physics in the last 10,000 years. They include all the invisible phenomena such as the nature of light, the workings of an atom, gravity, the attraction and repulsion of magnets, and a few others. For the purposes of physics, a rational explanation, a scientific theory, is a movie. In each frame of his film, the theorist has to put images of the invisible objects that serve as mediators. The viewer should be able to watch the movie and understand the mechanism. All we ever needed in order to understand phenomena such as electromagnetism and gravity was to make the invisible mediators visible.